Wagner's marathon opera, De Meistersinger. The trumpeters have time on their hands. They don't have to blow again for another two hours. And the stage crew can slip off for an extended tea break around the corner in the White Lion. I'll be going back in about ten minutes for the end of Act Two. Um, and I'll probably try and get myself in a position in the wing where I can watch the riot at the end of Act Two, because I think that's brilliant. If you took a still from it, it could have been a Bruegel painting. I mean, it's, um, Total riotous. It's um, the whole of it's brilliant. I think it's one of the best shows we've ever done. Nick Happel is a stage electrician. His shift works three 15 hour days with lots of overtime and lots of time off. It's an old fashioned system and the accountants hate it. The Opera House management has given notice that it wants a new, cost effective contract with regular hours and less time off. It is looking to make savings of over half a million pounds a year. Nick's union, Beck 2, is negotiating, but there's a tough fight ahead. The climax of Act 2 of Meistersinger is, appropriately enough, a medieval punch-up. The director, Graham Vick, has gone to town. There are over 150 people on stage, with 20 acrobats literally swinging from the rafters 30 feet above. There's a new man in charge of the negotiations. The, the ability on a 15-hour day to have effectively another four weeks holiday. Director of Personnel Mike Morris is not happy with the management's I tactics so far. I, I just come up with the ideas at the moment. I don't know quite how to yeah. put these ideas forward. I'm looking to you for guidance well, for it. I'm giving you my yeah. guidance loud and clear. Well, this is just a shame <laughs> because... We, well, no, look, this, sort of this was put on the table last July, for God's sake. We're now a year down the road and new ideas are being put forward. It's not acceptable. You can't do it. Negotiation does not work like that. Well, I don't understand negotiation. Well, I'm explaining it to you. <laughs> You've got to set your stall out on day one. OK, you might have a, a short period for, for discussion, but if we want this agreement to be in place by the end of June so that we can start working it in the tail end of the season and have it up and running on the 1st of September, it's absolutely out of the question to introduce major reductions in terms and conditions that were not flagged. It just won't work. And if I was a shop steward, I'd walk out. Well, we said in the first draft, this was covering absolutely everything, we said um, the first draft. OK, so we'll put it in, but I, but yeah. I, but I give warning that if, if, there's a, if there's an objection raised and they, they say this is new, then mm. I'm going to withdraw because, you know, and we live to fight again, John. I know it by reputation to be so untold, hard but fair. And if you look at it coldly and look at it business-like, I suppose it could be described as a hatchet man if you looked at what happened at ITN. Now, again, it's not a very positive description, so I wouldn't necessarily apply it, because I don't know the man well enough. But I'll reserve judgment until I see what he's made off in the Vialtis corner. And it's judgment day at White Lodge in Richmond Park, home of the Royal Ballet's junior school. The young dancers, aged between 11 and 13, are soon to face a nerve-wracking ordeal. Jade, finish. Don't drop your leg. Yeah? Rest, girls. Don't drop your leg. Now, why is today special? Because we've got audition. Audition with Anthony Dalton. I'm excited but because Anthony Dahl's coming, we get <laughs> I'm nervous because Anthony Dahl's coming and it's very important. 
Anthony Dowles, the director of the Royal Ballet. He has come down to White Lodge to select a couple of very young stars for the revival of the company's popular production of The Nutcracker. Dame Merle Park, director of the school, is determined that her young charges should make a good impression. I have to go out, or whoever goes and picks them for the productions. They're taught it, I see a whole class, and only certain people are picked. So, and I worry about that, seeing them so young, having to, you know, what, how awful the rest of the week or the rest of the term will be, that they've had this big disappointment not being in Nutcracker. How important is it to you to be selected? Very, very. I love to, because it's, it's, it's not only for me, it's like for my mum and my family as well, because they'd really love to see me on stage. Mm, yeah, yeah. On. Back at Covent Garden, Mike Morris wants to get on with the negotiations. The union team is led by Jerry Morrissey from Beck to head office. Thank you for the agenda, Mike. Uh, first of all, as you would expect, we're not in a position to comment in uh, detail today in relation to the papers you've given us. Why aren't you in a position to respond? Just as a matter of interest. Well, on all the general issues. Yes. Because we've got to go back to the House. So therefore, you as a negotiating committee are not empowered to negotiate. Is that the, is that, is that the position? Well, this is a walking. This is not the negotiating committee. This what is, is it? The, this is the walking path. Oh, is it? <laughs> When do, we, when do we get the privilege of meeting you to negotiate, then? Well, I raised that at the last <laughs> meeting, if you remember. I suggested that what we needed was, once we got the final paper, yes. we needed two or three days uh, to bring it all together. But oh, I, well, I, I still I'm, believe I'm, I'm under a misapprehension. So I don't know who's on which committee, obviously, as I'm new. Well, yeah. I thought we were here to negotiate, I have to say. What, today? Today, yes. Well, no, I made, that very clear at the la I made that very clear at the last meeting, that obviously we would have to go back to a House meeting. <laughs> Time is running out, Jerry. Well, I think, you, with all due respect, Mike, you mean, I think that's a bit rich because, you mean, we're not the ones who have actually been holding up the process. Well, I, I, we're the, no, so I'm, I'm not involved we're, in that because I wasn't here. All I well, can you tell you is, be, in order to get to where I've got to get to, we've got to start appointing these leaders. Well, I think, you mean, you may come in with a different timetable on that. Right. I think it's totally unfair on both the staff and on the union who have been negotiating constructively with you mm. on this and putting a lot of time into it. To then say when we've actually been coming to meetings, asking for a schedule, the information hasn't right. been available, they've had to go away and get more information again, and then to impose a time schedule, which is totally unachievable. Right. Supposing we stick, what's going to happen? Is he, is, is he going to walk away and, stop and, and withdraw his cooperation from us? Because I mean, what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to knock him off his stride a bit, because, I, because he, at the moment he's controlling the timetable, and I don't like that. Not that you're right to go as well, you are, personally. Don't let him go before we fix up to have lunch with him, but maybe that's not appropriate anymore. <laughs> 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 yeah, and I, I just, I know, I, I'm, maybe my tactics are totally wrong. I, I just feel yeah. that, you know, <clears throat> we need to get older. him. The first one we saw, what's the Irish lady's name? Yeah. And there's the fourth one down from the top. Who is that? Naomi. I've got her, yes. The Japanese lady's near. The last two, the taller one of the two, who was that? Um, the first one we said was, which is, the designer would like that look. She looks sort of very sort of period. I'm just wondering whether it's too tall. Dances very well. I just want to see four of you do the doll dance again. Emma, Helen, Naomi, and Maria. Could you do get it. the dolls? We have to do it one by one. Well, sit down, the others. Sit down, guys, and rest, don't you? Because the, the, that one's quite tall, isn't she? No, they're actually got quite a good height, aren't they? Who goes first? I don't well, worry. Who's going to be brave and go first? Come on, Emma. Not any more fritters. <laughs> On the first night, one of these girls will dance Clara, the owner of the Nutcracker doll. The boys are competing for the part of Fritz, Clara's envious brother.
yes. Have you finished yes. them? Yes, mm. yes, right. yes, yes. Thank you very, Thank very you much. Very much. Very good. Thank I you. like the girls half Japanese. Do you think you could have a Japanese? Well, she's um, half Japanese. But I mean, you, but the look of her. I mean, in Edwardian times, would they have given birth well, to a Japanese girl? No, but Christine, you have not moved on with the times. We cannot think that way these days, you see, because I have people from all races oh, in the company. She's very nice. She's that, very so. delicate. It'll be nerve-wracking. Every fun. performance will be different. Mm. She will go in the wrong direction. She will forget where she's going. Where she the Naomi girl, I think, is all right, has something. Pretty. Mm. It's a nice it's face for the stage. Mm. Yes, yeah, she's fine and small. I mean, you can tell that this one, um, is it, who is it? Emma. Irish. Irish. Yes. Emma. 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 Yeah. Very easy dancer. Yeah. Whether it yeah. looks too mature, I, I just don't know. But maybe yeah. in that nighty, that sort of does make them look younger than they are, that sort of empire line. Personally, Helen isn't going to be able to carry it enough. I feel it's a little bland. Who is she? The taller one with the blonde hair. Yes. She's lovely. I mean, she's wonderful to yes. teach. She's a lovely little dancer. But she's not very outgoing. Mm. Whether or not she'd be able to carry the whole thing, plus that second act, mm. I don't know. Mm. You know, I mean, one could be pleasantly surprised, but I am. I still don't know really to the trial. No. no. That Scott was, Scott, is that yes, Grant. Grant? So it should be Gr I like Grant, and I think the the one with the reddish hair looks Alex quite Grant. a yes. character. Yes. Not too very right. good feet, but I don't no. think it's going to mess too much. No. But I don't know who he as a cover. Philip was the other one. She was the taller one. Philip oh, with the, the way you're talking one. about yes, the pudding, the pudding yes. yes, he's third That's form and he's yeah. reliable. Wasted and it as might a cover also encourage not? him to stay oh. hmm? because he wants to be an airline pilot. <laughs> well, that's Philip. That's fine. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So it might help encourage yeah. him to stay. Actually. What is he doing oh, here? Exactly. Why not? Well, it's a foot between a footballer and <laughs> an airline pilot. Well, he, he so why is he at the Royal Ballet School? <laughs> 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 what happened in the selection process? <laughs> well, he, he just got. You know, I mean, Mummy took him to ballet, and he we came. He quite to liked J, it. Did uh, he like it? Yes, he quite liked it. But he just and sort he still of likes he just it. went through the motions. He became a JA. He got in here, and all of a sudden, he says, "I'm not enjoying this very much. I think I'd like to go." Well, he doesn't think he wants to do it for the rest of his life. So maybe we better get him a taste of the theatre then. They are worried about their job. I think they need a bit. Mike Morris has invited Jerry Morrissey to lunch. Between the hors d'oeuvre and the plat de jour, there's a chance to sound the union man out. Off the record, of course. I heard one point which, which wasn't quite clear to me this morning. Uh, and, and I, I, I think I got the signal right, but tell me if I'm wrong. You're not expecting the pay packets to be exactly the same. No, but we couldn't. What I was feeling the same was that I don't think it would be accepted if the, if the, diff, if the gap was as big as is currently indicated. We've taken that on board. And, um, no, they're not expecting pound for pound. Yeah, well, that's, that's not that evening at White Lodge, the results are pinned up. Two children have been picked for each part, along with a cover or understudy. Grant, the Scot, has been chosen, and so has half-Japanese Maria. Emma, the mature-looking Irish girl, has not. Naomi, with a good face for the stage, has got through, along with the taller blonde, Helen. <laughs> Philip, the aspiring airline pilot, and Alex, with the imperfect feet, have also made the grade. I can't believe it. <gasps> Are you going to tell your parents? Yes. When? When I find a phone card. <laughs> At the interval, whether it's opera or ballet, those in the best seats will head for the crush bar. They'll need to fight for the attention of the two regular barmen. In one corner, with 32 years of service, is Peter, and in the other, Bill, who's been here 30 years. Well, there's a lot of... Um... I don't know what you call it. You wouldn't call it animosity. There's a lot of competition on the bar for customers and things like that, you know. 
but uh, it, it, we all get by. We all get by. Who wins in that competition? I do. Invariably. We tend to be very little stations all over the world. Over the years, contempt has bred some contempt, unfortunately. Familiarity has. So he's down there, and I'm up here, and that's perfect. <laughs> Good long. It's not all love, you know. <laughs> well, I suppose it's like every other job. You, you've heard all the things that they've got to say and those you don't agree with, and every time that comes up, it's a bit grating, but... Uh... Imagine you broke down on Guess of personality, etc. You know? So I'm just said, so okay, leave it at that. But so, tell me, do you, do you not speak at all? Not at all. Oh, it's long enough not to be. Long enough not to be. Not to be? Intimate. We just don't say good evening or anything, that's it. We communicate if a phone rings and I give him a message and that's it. Yeah, from the public point of view, of course, there's no difference. He's at the other end and all that, so no problem. But personally, as a person, I'd just rather not uh, communicate with him. But it's a good long distance, then. Well, that's ideal. <laughs> There's a sea of tranquility between us now. <laughs> Half an hour down the Piccadilly line are the Royal Ballet's main rehearsal studios in Barons Court. Today it's the first full company rehearsal of the Nutcracker. Helen is dancing Clara, closely watched by her friends and rivals, Naomi and Maria not to mention ballet master Chris Carr and producer Sir Peter Wright. On the centre, please. And now comes Clara's big moment. The pas de deux. It's a tall order for a 12-year-old. Not only must she know the steps off by heart, but she's expected to show mature interpretation and convincing stagecraft, too. Don't go too far out. Don't go too far out. You're too far out. <coughs> Face. Come down. Come down stage. Come down stage. It's decision time for the stage crew as well. Jerry Morrissey and shop steward Peter Coggan want their members to back a tough negotiating strategy. However, as Peter said, we have three days of intensive negotiations with him Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. And I have no doubt that those three days will either make or break these negotiations. Can we go ahead and negotiate on the basis of this document with the amendments that you've put in today? Those in, those in favour, please show. Those against? OK, thanks very much. Peter, we don't want the night crew there just for Wednesday, because you know, I don't think this is going to drag to Wednesday. Yeah, but I mean, issues affecting the night crew probably won't come up till yeah, later. Probably, won't come up till later. Do, you know? The whole directly. thing doesn't affect the night crew. Directly, what affects the night crew is, is that you retain on. your time and a half <laughs> rates <laughs> as compared to the day crew. You retain your Let payment for the cost cut. Mate, over the great to the spent over the last five years, they've used the night crew as a split. Nights and won't be left isolated. No, I'm, I've told you I'm time not, and again, no, Pat. Well, you told me time and again, but with the greatest respect, you've told me lots of things time and again that have not happened, Peter. Yeah. I don't want to go into that because that's divisive. You know when he's transformed into Prince? There you go, and you must go up as if respect is the Prince, yeah? You must go up. <laughs> the selection committee still hasn't decided who will play Clara on the all-important first night. You're doing very nicely, very good. Moment, very well. Good girl. Good. Okay. Yes, yes. 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 It's, it's a pleasure. She plays very well indeed. Everything is exciting. But yes. the feet. Yes, we'll work all, on you know, all, Yeah, we'll practice that. It suddenly becomes rather just yeah. a young girl, floppy-floppy. Yes. 
three days later, the first stage rehearsal at Covent Garden. Parties and notice. Alex, will you please concentrate? It's the first time many of these children have set foot in the opera house, let alone gone backstage. Who's the other girl? Oh, look at all the scenery. Really really the stage is wicked, isn't it? I do it last time. I wanted to do that tree. It's brilliant. Yeah. Could you just go up stage for us, please, kids? Thanks. Just go up stage for us, please, Bob. Hold down, please. Weight's going down, cloth coming up. And that's the way the old flying system works. Long way down. Judging heights, 100 feet? No, 150 feet. In today's stage crew are 28 men and one woman. Chuck's in! Dallas Burge learnt the ropes at the Sydney Opera House. She's worked at Covent Garden for five years and knows how to pull her weight in this macho world. I almost underestimated how difficult it could be to fit in. I think I do fit in, but uh, I don't know that I'd really thought about how uh, much I might be ruffling people's feathers. <laughs> do you think you have been? I mean, is it a man's world? Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, there's only one of me and there's 28 down of them down there, so I think that's rather a man's world. How do you cope with it? Uh, <laughs> um, most, I suppose, I have my own retorts or I... Uh, I make sure I um, give plenty of verbal back, so to speak, so that, in a way, also attack is my defence. I tend to be quite quite strong in what I say to people, so it tends to make uh, ones who would like to undermine me, you know, they've got to think very carefully about doing it because I might be able to say something very smart at the time that's again going to embarrass that man in a group of men, which is not going to look very nice. <laughs> I, I have to become more tolerant, in a way. <laughs> but does it... Does it get to you? Uh, yeah. I mean, some days are worse than others. Sometimes it's, like they say, water off duck's back, but other times I find it quite upsetting. OK, are we ready? And then we were looking at the tree and everything, and it's all fabulous. And, well, yeah, we're, we're not supposed to see them, we're supposed to wait for them. Then we've got to look at the tree, we've got to because the tree's still out. Look at the tree, look at the tree, isn't it lovely? Hang on. I have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, no, you know, I've got, I get a buzz out of it. I was, you know, sort of, it's the only thing I know how to do, but I'll have to look for something else if they make this job too unbearable. You know, and, and take, all, take away all the, all the joy out of it. It's a very strange place with the amount of work and stuff and the time spent. A lot of guys here see me more than they see their wife and children. And with this new system, <laughs> with this new system, I think it will become an, an increasingly fraught place, you know. Three days have been put aside for the final negotiations between management and union. Yesterday, they spent eight hours arguing about the details of working conditions. It's the beginning of day two. Um, Mike Morris needs to get his teeth into the real bone of contention. Where shall I start? Let's start on the rates of pay, shall we? I'm, I'm sure that's not of any interest to anybody, but, you know, we'll st we've got to start somewhere. We? we said that there should be a grade scale and that Grade four, which is the grade on which we expect the charge hands to transfer, should be at 26,000. But that 26,000 figure uh, <coughs> is, is more than the majority are likely to earn in, in, the, in the current year. Now, there are obviously some higher earners. But as I said last night, there's no way that we can guarantee the earnings of the highest earners at their current level. 
the problem is going to be is that at the end of 12 months, 18 months, there's no good for a member of the running team to go down to their to their uh, bank manager and say, I mean, I'm very sorry, I took all this on trust, but unfortunately, this is my earnings pile now. That was my earning power before that. Yes, and I am a second-class citizen at the Royal Opera House because, you mean, I'm doing nothing more than general humping. And that's all I'm being used for. What we're trying to do is to, is to put up an agreement or, or a set of proposals which tries to address your fears and your concerns, give you the best shot, the best guarantee, the best training and the best future that we can see, but at the same time doesn't tie us hand and feet into a situation where we are not getting the funding, the new shows and, 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 and the sponsorship that we're getting now and, 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 and therefore inevitably having to lay people off. The last stage rehearsals for the Nutcracker in full costume and falling snow. Fifteen minutes, I think. On and off. It just stows continuously to now to the end of the act. And about five minutes, six minutes in. Nam is dancing Clara today, but she still doesn't know who will be chosen to star on the opening night in front of the press. Yes, we must say that we want to mention before we move on. I mean, do, do, do we want to make this a, a, a lunch break as well? Because there, there, there aren't any sandwiches today. they're talking about the whole commitment we, we tied him up we okay, said well, so are you going to give him a commitment then? I mean are we going to negotiate here or are we going to be stubborn well, and what's that what's that then? Because because I do mean, feel that there could be a compromise in here yeah. Yeah. oh yeah I mean if we could raise for argument's sake don't jump down my throat but if, if, if we could instance raise that 26,000 to 27,500 yeah. with a view to it being 29 after training yeah the one thing that he said to us is I came across yesterday with substantial increases as he said I need signals from you and if there is signals from you that we're in that we're in the ball pack that we're going to reach agreement and some of these issues we can move on. He said that, right? Yes, sir. Now we're into the middle of the second day. I think now is the time to cut away the, you mean, the rubbish from it and get ourselves to a position where we're going to stick to. So at yeah. some point we have to make a statement yeah. of where yeah. we are. Yeah. You've got to tell them what our bottom line is. But let me ask you a question. Supposing Jerry walks through the door now and says, listen, everything that's in contention between us, we accept if you move from 26 to 27. I would, I would say to you that I cannot sustain necessarily a half million, but I can sustain something very nearly approaching it. Yeah, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't tell him to no. F off, would you? No. no. Of course not. And I would rather us take a, a straighter, more honourable line and tell him what we want. Fine. <coughs> I'm quite happy to go down that way. We just tell him we don't budge from those figures. Doesn't it, make it simpler, doesn't it make it simpler for our thinking? It makes it simple for thinking, yes, but it's the way people, uh, you mean, are brought up to believe, isn't it? Well, that you're always asked for a little bit more than you're prepared to accept. We'll see. We've got too much trust in human nature, Steve. I'll have to do something. Do you really think that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, after lunch, the union put forward its final demand. 27,500 for the upper grade, which would become the benchmark for the others. The management team, shaken, called for an immediate adjournment. 90 minutes later, they're back. Sorry we've been so long. Uh, we, we've been struggling with uh, the proposal you put to us. We can't accept it. Uh, it, it's, it is going to eat into our savings to such an extent that it just isn't going to work, I'm afraid. Uh, we've really tried, but we just can't make it work. I can say two things which move us on a bit, but we're now getting right to the edge of what we can do. Um, I'm looking at 
may be 26,500 for, for, the, for the grade four. You haven't got a position on that. There's still a thousand pounds between them. Now it's the union's turn to ask for an adjournment. Because the mandate is given going in. We've got two choices. You mean we had a knock it on the head and tell them that is not acceptable. The figure we gave them to you was our bottom line. That was genuinely our bottom line and we don't move from that. Yeah. Or we actually say to them, okay, we can go with this, but only with the following conditions. We've got to go one way or the other. Those are the only two options. We either negotiate conditions or we don't. Right, let's go around. Pat, negotiate conditions or not? The option you put first about getting them in. No, just no, no negotiation conditions. Steve? First option. What? No negotiation. No negotiation. I feel that they would want me to continue negotiating personally. Negotiations. Yeah. First option. First option. Well, I think I'll be with Jerry. Right. 4 2. Pete? Uh, find out if there's any change to conditions. 4 3. Second option. I really don't know. Like, first one, I think. First option. Right. We don't know what comes from. It doesn't matter. 6 4. We don't negotiate in conditions then. It's 48 hours before the big night. Anthony Dowell and Peter Wright must finally bite the bullet and decide who will dance Clara. I thought days ago, what was it? It's Maria. Maria. Yeah. It was a bad start but got better. Yes. I mean, it was I the do. dance quality that yeah. won out. Yeah. But what the other girl had, which was terribly well, fresh, wasn't yes, she? Can I say of, also, I, I actually liked her the best. Mm. I don't think she dances it as well. But I think in this, that, that the for me, it's the spirit and everything. I That's thought she was Naomi. sweet yeah. yesterday. Yes. I really and loved her. And you've got to carry the heart. Maria really. has a bit tense today. Yes. Well, let's, shall we? We can yeah. say definitely first night is Naomi. Yes. Prior to the previous adjournment, when we put forward to you the figures that we said yeah. to you, you mean was our bottom line. You mean those were our bottom lines. Uh, and that's where, that's where we're coming from. Uh, so from our position is, we, as we've promised you, will report back to our members on the position. Uh, but the recommendation from the Watkin Party will be to reject. Um, I think that's where we are. Okay. Well, I think I think uh, I, I, obviously I'm I'm sorry that we that we can't uh, agree to talk now as you do uh, about a, a complete protection of everybody's earnings, so that everybody goes into the new system without any change in earnings. Uh, I don't think it was ever realistic. So maybe well, we always began. We're always working on a false premise here. I'm very sorry, but there it is. Uh, I mean, are, are you available tomorrow? Because we have, yes, we, have we have tomorrow pe penciled in. I'm available tomorrow, so you may not be in the office. Right. Okay. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank you. So what's next? So we report to Jeremy tomorrow morning. Well, we have to put it <coughs> in writing. I mean, I think it's just right. Anyway, that, what do we have to? Is that, is that the next thing? Well, I, I, I. The what point happened? is, that we, a, a, a better thing to do might be just put it straight into dispute, give three months' notice, and, and if we're going to, if we're going to increase our offer, so everything's all, all bets are off. ACAS. Yeah, but. The trouble is that if you do that, you'll lose all the goodwill that we've had. We so haven't got any goodwill. We, oh, have. Yes, we have. Not have. enough. Disappointing. But I suppose not surprising.
Authentic. Yeah, oh, thank you very much. I'm the only barman who managed to sing on the stage anyway. That makes them mad the other end. My best moment here was singing to the Prince and Princess of Wales on the stage of the Friends concert. Actually, on the stage of Covent Garden. Two years in a row. Yes, very nice it was. Sang from uh, Bless the Bride. This is our lovely day. Yes, yes. This is the day I shall remember the day I'm dying. Just like that, we're the back of chorus. <laughs> 6 30, sir, thank you. And the white wine? Hello, sir. How are you? <laughs> Four glasses of mineral water, please. <laughs> never did those years ago. I know it's a good value from the house point of view, a pound. Next best thing is holy water. It's on the book their ticket and had a supper and something to drink, you know. It's come to four or five hundred, six hundred pounds on it. I used to think, good God, you know, um, makes my sort of half a pint of light out look a bit silly, but uh, I've got used to it. We've broken down, basically. That's the, that's the headline. Mm -hmm. um, we broke down after two very intensive days of, of negotiation where both sides moved, I thought, towards an agreement, really. But at the end of the day, uh, if I can summarise it this way, uh, I think we are understanding each other on the working pattern and the shape of the terms and conditions, but we are about a thousand pounds a man apart on payment. I don't know. I mean, the argument comes back to their argument. It's a big change. We should be paid something for the big change. That, that is effectively what they're saying. Yeah. And, and, and that's the point. But we've got know. a lot of other big changes coming but, up over but, the next but, five but, years, but and we, don't, we can't afford, we can't afford change. to pay for change. But I used to like my job. <laughs> I'm not very keen with the way it's going now, no. I don't believe in exploitation or slavery. And I never came into this with an intention of going in <laughs> ten hours a week more work. Yes, can I speak to Jerry Morrissey, please? Hello, it's Mike Morris here at uh, Royal Opera. I'm, I, I think I was right to, to draw the line yesterday afternoon, having um, reported to Jeremy this morning. I mean, he was um, a bit alarmed at the, at, the, at the scale of the offer that I did make. Uh, so so uh, I, I think we have both found each other's bottom lines. That's what's worrying me. Now, what, what I'm not quite clear about... I'll wait and see what happens. But I, I would not describe myself as wildly optimistic about my future prospects at the Royal Opera House. Right, right. I mean, do, do you think that there's any, any point in us getting together and, and just exploring whether there's any, any, anything more we can do? Really? The posters go to press weeks before the opening night, so the marketing department had to gamble and pick a Clara. They got it wrong. It's not Maria who will dance tonight, but Naomi. Are your family coming? Yeah, um, my mum, my dad, my brothers, and my dancing teacher, my old dancing teacher, and my grandma. Turn around there, sweetheart. Let me see. Does it feel safe? Yeah. Well, I'm sure that's fine. Don't forget your bows, though. Okay. Have you finished with that lipstick? Is this a big night for you? Yes, very. <laughs> what are you feeling? <laughs> excited. We are, aren't we? Not nervous, really. Just excited. <laughs> And Alex, with the dodgy feet, will Can play Fritz. Do I will when I've finished doing my hair. Okay, thanks. What a gel you have put on that on the water. The house is full, and the critics are out in force. Thank you. Thank you. Don't go on the stage, please wait for me. Because the red light might still be on. Could you wait there for me, children? Let me come by. Yes. Do you want to see you in that? It means you cannot it's not safe for you to go on the stage, darling. Okay, kids, you can come on. 
Now say good luck for the last time and then stop. <laughs> You go down there. You like that. I saw your mum as well, and she's. Have you seen her? Yeah, she says good luck. Okay. She told me to tell you good luck. Okay. So I'll see you on there. Okay. She'll be fine. Okay. I'll good see luck. you later. Good luck, Philip. Enjoy it. Thank you. She will. I'm sure she will. Well, I think I'm going to have to leave you in a minute. After the doll dance and before Clara's big pas de deux, all the other White Lodge children get their turn on stage in the battle scene.
Tell, tell them what you call it tomorrow, Maria. Just to turn around that way and look yes, that way. And you don't see, if you're yeah. facing that okay. way, do you see the front? <laughs> All right, I'll see you next Thank time. you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thanks very much. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Hey, wasn't that wonderful? There you go. Oh, that's so nervous. Why are you done? Didn't look it. You honestly didn't look it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Use pimples all over my doing it now. The union negotiations broke down again. Now another proposal has been hammered out. Mike Morris is offering an extra £500 per man, but with more conditions attached. The stagehands are meeting to vote on whether to accept. ...about a number of issues, and on those issues, if you reject it today, we will be inviting management back to ACAP to consider those issues. Right? Right. The result of the ballot, unless there is a massive swing in the, in the last couple of days, then both offers have been rejected and we will invite management back to ACAS to actually discuss the substantive issues. What I'm most concerned about is having to go back to the board and say, well, actually, I haven't quite got there. I've spoken to board members. I don't think that, um, uh, they, that they will be uh, unduly alarmed, uh, but obviously uh, I've got to deliver. Uh, and there's no doubt about that. Is your job on the line? Yes, of course it is. Uh, if, 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 this, if this package fails, then, then um, obviously they will wonder whether they were right in making this particular appointment. Yes, of course. At ACAS, Mike Morris made another modest adjustment to the package and the union accepted. The new stage agreement is now in place, saving the Opera House around half a million pounds a year. This is this one's really boring. <laughs> you think it's boring? Naomi got some very good reviews. One newspaper said she was adorable, with a fine feel for drama. Quite an achievement for a young child playing to an audience of 2,000. Ready? Two, three, four. Everyone's a fruit and nuts. You're going to sing to me? <laughs> Take care. 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 Take care.